Hi, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the basic uh, post processing tools in ANSYS. Uh, as you know, ANSYS is a ANSYS Mechanical is a super easy to use uh, finite element analysis tool, but uh, so some of the post processing has been greatly expanded over the years, um, and that helps us. Uh, get to the results better. So here are a couple of things that may be of interest to you. So we can obviously visually see some of, some of these interactions. So here I have a USB going in and out of the, of the contact. We can look at the stresses as the USB engages and disengages. Um, the first thing that we often want to do is adjust the, the contours. So there are a lot of options available, and they're all accessed by right-clicking on the contour line. For example, if I want to exaggerate the, the stresses in certain areas, I can uh, grab one of these and start moving them back and forth. Similarly, I can expand this or contract it. I can also specify a range. So maybe I want to look at the range between 3,000 and 2,000. So then this shows me just the area I like to look at. I can increase the number of contours um, or decrease them. I can right click and uh, assign independent bands. This uh, turns off the, the colors in other areas so it has this, uh, you know, greenish gray color on the bottom and then on top there's this purple area so you can kind of uh, visually ignore those areas and focus on the contours of uh, blue to red that we normally look at so this is some ways of of making use of the contour lines you can see there are a lot of options here um, that's a new one high fidelity uh, you can also uh, change the color scheme to reverse rainbow independent bands, none. We can uh, go back to regular rainbow. Semi-transparency kind of blocks this out. So if things are kind of overlapping, you can still see your, your contour lines, vertical, horizontal, uh, logarithmic. And uh, this, is a, this is a new one here, uh, auto update, scientific notation, etc. So many different options available here. Let's turn off this semi-transparent option. Okay, so uh, you, if we want to zoom into, and when you're done with it, you can always do a reset, and it goes back to the, the conditions before. Now, sometimes, uh, in, in addition to adjusting the contours, you may want to look at a specific area in detail. For example, maybe I want to look at the area on, uh, around here in detail. So in, in, since a few releases ago, ANSYS allows you to, uh, let's, uh, normally it looks like this. Um, and you can certainly select a, a few surfaces. So if I'm really interested in these areas here, um, let's actually hide this. F hide this. So maybe we want to inc include these areas as our stress plots. So you don't have to plot everything. You can plot just in a few specific areas. Right-click Insert Stress. So if I select the areas before, that those are only the, the only areas that will be post-processed. And you can see we have the semi-transparent thing that lets us look through it. We can kind of see where the high stress area is right here. And then there's some sort of a stress concentration over here building up as well. Okay. So that's one option. Um, even more interesting is you can, instead of plotting on the surfaces, I can select just a few elements. So if I want uh, you know, just a handful of elements over here, I can plot you know, strain on just these areas. I can see that. 
Uh, one of the coolest features in the latest release is if I right click on the result here, I can say create local max probes. Uh, oftentimes, you may have stresses that are, that's high in multiple areas, so this automatically finds some of the high, high peaks in the model. So it'll, it'll find maybe uh, six of the highest peaks in this model. If I want all the high peaks in this area, I can go to one of the previous plots and say, or you can just hit the K button, and it shows you where they are, and we have a, a big table here of local maxima, and I can click on each of them. I can drag these uh, these things around too, uh, usually using the selection button. I guess they may have, oh here, this, this is one. So you can kind of uh, move things around if you want to. But it's in 3D space, so when you start moving things around, they are liable to go somewhere you don't expect it to. So you should be careful with this. Uh, but this tells you what the max, and I guess L shows you where the, where the minimums are. A, a few points. So you can certainly zoom in. Uh, if this becomes too unwieldy, uh, delete all here. We'll clear all of the screens. Uh, you can also probe by hand, so if you say, I want to know what the value is over here, as you move the cursor around, it tells you what the maximum is. So you can kind of select that, um, delete all, we'll clear that. Or you can delete a few of them. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so the, the other thing that's very useful is oftentimes we like to look at cross planes. And the, there's a fast and easy way to do that in Ansys Mechanical, and that is a section plane option. So we can draw a line, and that just cuts through it, and we can look at the section plane. Uh, we can plot a, a movie. I guess I should show all my bodies. That makes a little help this to make more sense. Okay, and you can move it around, zoom in, zoom out as the video plays. I could definitely use some more refined mesh in that area. Um, but section planes are, are kind of ad hoc. You kind of just eyeball it. Another way to create a, a more accurate section plane <clears throat> is by creating a geometry plane. So, um, Oh, sorry, creating a construction geometry. And you can see you can create path, solids, or surfaces, STL, even contour lines. Um, so that, that's something new, too. This is a beta feature, which I haven't used extensively, but I should definitely give it a try. So let's create a, a cup plane right down the middle of this. Um, so first, we need to have a coordinate system. The cup plane will lie on the XY plane. So once we have a coordinate system, we want to uh, rotate this around the Y axis by 90 degrees. Okay. Now we can uh, go back to the model and we'll build a surface based on our new coordinate system. So you can see it lies right on the XY plane. And when we have this, now we can plot any type of information we want on that. So I can do the stress on the on a surface, and there's only one surface available, so that's pretty easy to evaluate. And that's it. All right, so this is, this is exactly on that plane. You can look at it from either direction. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's a short, really short video. One of the things I should mention is that when we look at results like this, it's oftentimes good to take a look at the elements. You can see this is a really poor quality mesh. I have basically one element through the thickness of, of this beam here. So you can certainly use a lot of refinement. But this looks kind of messy. If you click on this button here, it shows you the whole element. So when we do a cut plane here, uh, all of the edges that intersect with that plane gets, gets, uh, gets visualized as well. That's why we see all of these. 
get rid of it, you can see no show no wireframe and the result looks a little bit better. But obviously to improve this even more, we should definitely refine the mesh and improve our model. So that's it for a quick example of some of the things you can do with, um, with post-processing. Uh, this is again from Ming Yao at Singularity Engineering. We're based in Oakland, California. And uh, thank you and have a good day.